Good morning and welcome to the Wednesday, July 8, 2009 edition of the Investigative Journal. I'm your host, Greg Szymanski. You're listening to LibertyRadioLive.com. And my two guests today are return guests, Noreen Gosh and uh, former New York Police Detective Jim Rothstein. And we're going to pick up where we left off uh, a couple weeks ago when we talked to Noreen and Jim. Noreen, are you there? I'm here. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay, and Jim, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Greg. Thanks for having okay. me on again. Good morning, Noreen. Good morning, Okay, Jim. let me just give you, let me just tell you this for the program. If my Internet connection should fail, Jim and Noreen, just take over till I come back, uh, just in case. I've had a couple of Internet problems in the last couple of days. I just wanted to say that. Secondly, try to stay as close to the phone as you can, and do not use a... Uh, uh, a speakerphone so we can hear the connection. Okay? Okay. 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 Okay, let's start out with Noreen. Uh, Noreen, just recap the story about your son. And I know there's a couple things you wanted to get to right away. And then, uh, Jim, of course, if you have any questions or want to chime in, just go right ahead. Go ahead, Noreen. Just uh, tell the listeners so we can pick up where we left off and they have a little background of what happened to your son. Okay. Well, uh, Johnny was kidnapped on September 5th, 1982. He was delivering his Sunday morning newspapers, and a man pulled up asking for directions. But then Johnny did not speak with him. He walked away. As Johnny walked a little further down the block, another man came out from behind two trees and followed him. The driver of the car started up his engine, took off, came around behind that block, and the next thing that the witnesses knew, they saw the car run the stop sign and head north out of town, and Johnny was gone. They managed to kidnap him in about nine minutes flat from the time he left the house. And this one, Johnny was about 12 years old. This happened in the early 80s. And yeah. uh, there's never been any type of really serious investigation. I thought Jim would just tell us a little bit about what went wrong that first day. Well, going back that, to that time, uh, when I first got involved, I spoke to the lead detective or captain, whoever he was in charge. And basically, after I told him who I was and what I did, he admitted to me that nothing was done. He said, in fact, even the composite drawing they made up was just a fake thing to uh, pacify the people and make them believe that they were doing something. So, uh, And that's been uh, two years ago when I was out there. The detective that is now doing in the investigation basically told me that nothing's going to happen even uh, with new information that's coming in. Right, and uh, what you've told us, Jim, in the past is that this could be the biggest terrorist threat facing our country, and uh, there's something we need to do about it, and nothing has been done. And you've you've investigated these uh, crimes to the highest levels when you worked with New York, and never got a complete investigation. You you investigated to the highest levels of the Vatican, highest levels of our government officials, and always the investigations were stopped. I was wondering, uh, at this particular juncture, uh, Noreen, do you still, uh, I know you've started an organization, uh, do you still hold out hope that people will wake up and end this pedophilia ring that's stealing many children in our country still to this day? Yes, I still have the Johnny Gosh Foundation, and what we try to do is continue the investigation on Johnny's case as the information still comes in, because my hope is that we will be able to uncover and expose, at least at the local level, the uh, trafficking network that was operating and taking children, which has not ever stopped. But if no one gets involved and no one does anything, then future generations, innocent children are at risk. And many of us who were raising our kids back at that particular time frame, many people now have little grandchildren. And the threat goes on because those children are just as vulnerable as the ones that were exposed and or kidnapped back in the 80s. 
You know, before we get into some of the particulars I know that you want to bring up today regarding your son's case, I wanted to ask Jim just to tell the listeners the gravity, the seriousness of this problem, what you found out as a, a longtime New York police and, uh, detective working in uh, trying to uncover pedophilia rings. Tell us a little bit about what you found out and the seriousness of this problem and how deeply, deeply embedded this is into the highest levels of the two organizations we mentioned earlier. Go ahead. Well, as you know, Greg, uh, we started back in the late 60s, and it took many twists and turns. It involved the occult. It involved many of our politicians. It involved many of the religious to the highest levels. And in every case, when we followed up, and there were plenty of police officers who wanted to do a legitimate investigation, but in each and every case, it was stopped. And to this day, and even now, it's gotten worse. You add another dimension to this, the computer, and the use of the Internet, where they can now send this information out within split second, uh, it's gotten far worse. Uh, and there's far less enforcement. You do every once in a while here, which amazed me is that the FBI finally looked at the uh, part of the trucking industry involved in this, which uh, I'd like to get into as we go along here is the information that we got on the Johnny Gosh kidnapping on how a federal investigation was conducted back then, but it never saw the light of day. And currently, if you're watching the news, uh, you, all these kids are disappearing at a bigger rate. And what's interesting even more so is you never hear what the solutions are. And uh, we know that this has gotten worse and worse just from the stuff that me and Noreen have done and what we hear from people who are victims of these crimes. Yeah, now what? To, let's go over some of the new things that you found out about Johnny's case. Uh, Jim, is there anything that you uh, wanted to tell us? Yes, in particular, uh, we've been getting information in the last couple of weeks. We found uh, uh, somebody who uh, seems to be doing a very good job of exposing some of this stuff, and it had to do with the trucking industry and a kiddie program where these truck drivers would take kids uh, along. Now, that in itself is a good idea, but there's been mentions made of uh, trucking people who weren't that legitimate, which brings to light a situation in Johnny's case, and Noreen would know the date when this guy came forward. But there was an incident where a truck was stopped in Mexico, and uh, lucky they went to the government, they went to the embassy with it, and that started an investigation which led to uh, a trucking outfit that was uh, involved in, uh, the people in the trucking in the, uh, company were involved in Johnny's case. And how this worked was uh, uh, they had people working there that would go around and set up these kidnappings. As we know, in Johnny's case, before the Martin boy was taken, uh, Noreen had gotten information that was going to happen, and the cops did absolutely nothing about it. Then we find in the Wetterling case, the same thing. These trucking people showed up, and uh, uh, they grabbed the wrong kid, or the kid they grabbed originally escaped from them, so they took Wetterling instead. And uh, this is a, uh, this latest development is big because we are finding all kinds of connections now with the trucking thing. And uh, uh, I don't believe that it's used in every case, but it's just another part of this bigger problem. That investigation that was done by a federal agency, uh, they actually had come up with 1,500 kids. But out of this, 834 were actually kidnapped and put into this underground, which to me is just devastating. And that investigation was done from 82 to 89 by 20 people. Uh, and I have personally talked to the guy that was the head of it. So, And Noreen has met him, too. So Noreen, Noreen you've you also... Go ahead. You've also mentioned, Noreen, that you have some informa new information on the local level in Des Moines uh, regarding your son's case. Uh, tell us about that. <laughs> 